Welcome back everybody to the Kirby's Epic Yarn playthrough. This is part four and we're going to be finishing up with Grassland today. Spoiler. Also, that was very fun. I didn't even realize that you could do that. You can jump on these little clouds here and I just had to go back and do it again because that was just too much fun. I like that. Little bouncy boingy clouds there. So we're going to be heading on into the mole hole which we uh, unlocked at the end of the previous video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell button notification if you would. It helps me out quite a bit. Uh, now, as far as the mole hole goes, this level was kind of a it was kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, I said it. I said it. It's a pain in the butt. Mm. I, I'm so sorry, you know, to have to use that kind of language, but it's just the way I felt about it. I was not a big fan of this level. Now, I did mention in the, the previous video, transparency. Uh, first of all, uh, transparency in the fact that I am recording this all over again. Uh, I'm going to be doing this on the uh, Dolphin emulator, because it looks better, and it's a little bit easier for me to set up and record with. Uh, so if the save file, or the beads that I had, look any different, I doubt anybody really noticed. Uh, that would be why, because this is a different save now. Um, second of all, the uh, transparency I mentioned in the big bean vine in the previous video. Uh, how many times did I do the mole hole level, or how many times did I restart it? This is try number six. <laughs> it was a very, very, very unpleasant experience for me to deal with. Uh, not because of the digging um, power up here that we got here. This is this is called Digger Kirby, and this is you know we're kind of digging through these uh, these sort of tufts of fluff, which are supposed to indicate that you know they're kind of, kind of like underground, you know, little rocky portions that we need to dig through with the heavy equipment, because that's what Kirby doubles as. He doubles as heavy equipment. Uh, I thought this part was very unique here with this little quicksand thing. You had these little um, uh, sewing machines kind of sewing uh, two two-tone yarn back and forth and kind of making it look like it was quicksand kind of pulling you down there. Uh, I was not a big fan of these flaming uh, salamander guys, uh, lizards. I don't really know what they are. Um, I suppose I could go and, and look it up really quick. You know, that, that might help. I did have, a, you know, one of them there walkthroughs that helped me. Um, and so that was helpful, but unfortunately I did not actually read the walkthrough before I started this level because I said, you know what, I'm going to go through and I'm going to do this level on my own and I'm going to see how it goes. Well, six attempts later, <laughs> and I was not a fan of this level, uh, I could not wait to finish it by the time I was done, and by the time I was done I was very happy about it. So. And this is a reason why. I didn't even realize on the sixth attempt that if I stand right there, the Candle Manders, is what they're called, can hit me through that uh, that little box thing or, or whatever. I don't know. What is that? Like a cage or something? I don't really know. Maybe, maybe it's like their... Maybe it's like their home. Maybe they made like a little, like a... Um, like a, a little, like a... Um, What's it like a when bears uh, hibernate? <laughs> a little a little hibernation hole or something, you know? It's like their little nest or something. Who knows? Anywho, uh, they are easy to dispatch, but unfortunately, the the digging tool is d does not have very big range, so you have to get very very close to them in order to hit them, and you cannot hit them when they're on fire, which is a double unfortunate uh, little snafu. Um, now this I had to think about for a second, because, uh, you know, again, transparency, I did mess up, uh, I believe once, actually, just, just one time, I messed up trying to figure out how to, oop, how to get past these, uh, these little boulders here that kind of, you know, are, are bound by gravity, I suppose. Um, so yeah, we're, so we're gonna think about this here, we're gonna take our time, no, we're not gonna, oh, that's right, I wanted to... Kind of get a glance and kind of see ahead, yes, okay. All right, let's think about this again. All right, so now we're gonna 
So we're gonna dig through. Now I can't get to that little portion there diagonally to the bottom left. Um, so I had to just kind of, uh, once it clicked into my head that what I had to do was just move really fast to get that little uh, exclamation uh, event time thingy, um, then, then it all worked out. And I said, hey, this is, this is how that works. There you go, just like that. Easy peasy. Uh, now what I, there we go. I was gonna say, what I didn't seem to realize is that I could have just kept going on through to the left. Um, and then we find this little, this little secret hole here, and we get the, oops, pop back out of it, the mole hole fabric disc. I, I know, I know it's a CD, but I like calling it a fabric disc, because that's what it is. It's, it's made of fabric, and it, it's cool. I like it. Uh, so, <laughs> I had a little bit of, a, uh, an inability to, uh, decide where I was, indecision, wow. Yes, that's what the definition of indecision is, an inability to decide. I had a little indecision there of whether or not I should go back through the hole there, or if I should just go down, and I went down. Now, the big thing about this level is, as you dig through all this fluff, um, you can and will find hidden uh, star beads, um, and I think just hidden other kind of beads as well. Um, that obviously do, yeah, there's one. Um, that obviously do not show up. But, uh, as you dig through, you can find them. I think I actually... Oh, no, maybe, maybe I didn't. I thought I missed one there, because I, I figured, hey, it was probably in the middle of the little circle of rainbow beads, but I guess not, because I did hit the very dead center of it. So you know me, I gotta explore everything. There we go. I got another little beady bead. I gotta explore everything. I gotta make sure that I got everything. Although, to be fair, I don't... I don't do all of it here, you know, I just kind of dig through, and then I'm just like, okay, you know what, I, I think, I think I've explored a, a, an, an acceptable amount, quality amount, um, and then, yeah, I think, I think that was it right there, no, no, still, no, I'm still going, Wee! that is fun, kind of shooting up into the air like that, but aside from that, the, the digging transformation was unfun, and like I said, I could not wait to get the heck out of here. <laughs> Hey, we got the big bonus. Alrighty, so we end that level with 1,673 beads, and that is enough for, clearly, enough for the gold medal, which I hit ages ago, but also, um, yeah, enough for 1,673 beads, so, you know, go figure. <laughs> Alrighty, so now we're at a total of 16,429, never mind, 16,729, sorry. Thanks for making me into a liar there, game. Uh, we got all the little treasures, and now I'm going to go back and do something that I hadn't done earlier, which I wasn't sure if I should, but I decided, you know what, now's as good a time as any. So with the f ooh, with the firecracker patch, that kind of pops up and spooks that little sleeping owl there, and the owl appears uh, to unveil a little secret rolly part that leads us into the weird woods which is going to be the final level of grassland but first like i said i'm going to be doing that thing that i was going to do that i didn't do earlier that i because i wasn't sure if i was supposed to do it and uh yeah kind of you know just gonna tip my head up hey so so we're gonna ten thousand beads over to this guy and then we get a a second floor to the quilty square He'll finish this project straight away, and by that he means, like, within, like, two seconds. <laughs> that was very fast. Oh, that was all he needed. Like, he, he could have done it at any time he wanted, and it could have done been done, like, lickety-split like that, but he needed the money first. <laughs> that was the gate, was the money. Alrighty, so we're gonna... I'm gonna pop into these apartments really quick, and it's gonna be more the same where you have to decorate, um the apartments in order for people to um, want to move in. Uh, unfortunately, I am missing one of the um, one of the uh, arrange arrangements, assortments, little little thingies here. Uh, there it is, the pyramid, it's in the Pyramid Sands level, which is, spoiler, that's gonna be in World 2, so obviously I do not have that yet. Uh, so in the meantime, um, I was gonna read some of the uh, the information, but then now now that I realize, as as I'm looking at it, I forgot where I stopped. 
So we're gonna we're gonna ignore doing the Wikipedia information. Don't worry, we still have plenty more game left to go. Uh, so I have plenty more time to read it as we go forth. Um, but yeah, like I said, as you put these decorations in, um, it will attract new tenants into the apartment building. And those tenants, like Zeke, will also give you uh, additional things that you can do. And speaking of Zeke, um, I decided to pop back in and see if he had new hide-and-seek. Although, I seem to have forgotten that when he does have a new hide-and-seek, he does pop up and say, Hey, there's a new hide-and-seek for you. So, you know, all that's all that's done. Uh, and again, spoiler, Pyramid Sands. <laughs> that's that's going to be the first level that we're dealing with in the uh, hot... Hot world? Hot land? Um, and once that happens, then it won't be a spoiler anymore, but until then it is a spoiler. So I, I apologize for that. So Weird Woods, here we go. Now this is going to be another interesting level where we are in transformation the entire time. Um, how many times did it take me for this level? Only two, actually. Um, this is, yeah, this would be the second attempt that I'm doing. Uh, technically, it was three. And once that pops up, I'm going to show it to you. Because, uh, you know, we got a little magic video editing uh, nonsensicalness going on here. But we're going to be in the UFO form, or the saucer form, as it's called. And we're... Ooh, hey. And this is an auto-scrolling level, which is a little bit of a pain. But, you know, hey, I, I made it happen. We made it work. We made it happen. The bounciness, though, when you hit off of a wall was really throwing me. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> that actually... Oh, that actually surprised me there with the zippy zap. Now, the trick to this level is that you want to always have a zappy zap charged up um, so that you won't be stuck in instances like this that I just displayed to you. Um, not to mention, it does have these uh, infinite spawning enemies here. Uh, and these bouncy bits are not fun. I do end up taking some damage here, and it auto-scrolls me forward. Uh, this would be the magic video editing here, if you couldn't tell. Uh, this is my next attempt afterward, because I forgot this little treasure, the telescope. And now that I got that, uh, we're going to go back to my original attempt here. Um, yeah, the reason why I missed it was because, first of all, I didn't realize that the spinning thorns you could destroy with the zippy zap. And I did not realize that, um, that it was there. That, you know, because I was being pushed off to the right side of the screen to try to avoid the thorns. So I really wasn't looking at the left side, so I, I totally missed it. Now, this guy here is called, if I could find it, uh, Wicked Willow. Um, and he looks a lot like the Wispy Woods, uh, the recurring boss enemy from the Kirby series. But this is not Wispy Woods. This is the Wicked Willow. So, you know, put, put a little respect on his name, you know? It's, he's not Wispy. He's not Woods. He is the wicked -est Willow. And really, his whole attack pattern is really similar to the Wispy Woods. You know, where the Wispy Woods kind of flings apples at you. This guy kind of flings uh, spiky fluff balls at you. And you just collect enough to zippy zap him twice. And then that's it for him. So we move on further into the Weird Woods. Now, I love this song. This is actually one of the songs that I uploaded to Weekend Music. Also, I love how <laughs> the little waddle dees, they just kind of, they cower in the corner. They're, they're scared, you know, they don't, they don't want to get beamed up by a UFO. Anybody would run and hide. But it was a little bit annoying <laughs> that they did that as I was recording this, but hey. I, I'm not going to say that it's not adorable, so. Anyway, these guys, uh, and what are these guys called again? The, um, um, no, not Button. Uh, there's the, uh, the Fabric CD. What are these guys called? Bo, uh, is it Bo Waddle Dees? Or is it Bronto Burt? I think it's Bronto Burt. Uh, they keep, uh, spawning with a, a big fat bead on them. So, collecting beads in this stage, if you couldn't tell already, is very, very easy. Um, I already have, like, a, a whole boatload of them. A ton. A heck ton. Oh, look at that. That's like the moon, and it's... 
Oh, I thought the moon. Oh, I thought that was. Oh, that's the trees in front of it. I thought, I thought it looked like somebody took like a little bite out of the moon or something. That would have been kind of, kind of neat. A little neat visual. Anywho, this is the first time that we see Waddle Doos as uh, carried by those Bron Bronto birds, I believe. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that that's what they're called. Um, and also the Scarfies. Uh, it, it was a very, very short portion earlier in the stage when I was mentioning the music and how much I love this song. Uh, Scarfies do appear in this level. They're the reason why I ended up restarting this level. Uh, I didn't realize that they're invincible. Uh, <laughs> once you get too close to them, as adorable as, as they are, when you get too close, they turn into terrifying monsters and they chase you. And when I say they chase you, I mean they chase you. Um, and they don't stop. And when they do that, they're invincible. So I kind of got pinned, and I got really not happy about it. I, I wasn't I wasn't too thrilled about being pinned down like that. So I said, you know what? I'm going to start this level over. We're going to give this a second go, a, a real college try, as it were. Anyway, so here's our little spiral to pull us out of the saucer uh, Kirby transformation. And that's the end of the stage, with 2,000, sorry, 3,000 and 16 beads. That's a lot. This is this has got to be the best farming stage. Uh, it is a little aggravating with all the bounciness, but other than that, you know, the beads, just the sheer, like, amount that you can collect is so incredible. Uh, so this was my first run of it, and we're going to magic video editing in the next attempt where I actually get the telescope. Now we're sitting at a nice, clean total of 14,473 beads. Uh, this guy would like to speak with us. Interesting. He wants to talk to me about his brothers. There's more of them? Oh dear. Anyway, that's going to be it for this part of the Kirby's Epic Yarn playthrough. Join me in part 5, where we'll be heading on to talk to that guy's brothers and also see what's going on with the Hotland. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all next time.